Hi there, Simon from simonwood.com. Five Sauvignons in front of me. And now when you think of great countries for Sauvignon Blanc, where's the first place that springs to mind? New Zealand? Actually, we've got a New Zealander to finish. What about France? Well, we've got a French one to start with. But the three in the middle, all from Austria, all from the same producer, a guy called Hannes Sabati. Never tried his wines before. What are they going to be like? It looks like we've probably got a good, better and best. Um, let's just dig in and see where we get to. First one, though, is a Bordeaux Sauvignon, Cuvée M. White from Chateau Marot. I don't know who M. White is. Does it say anything on here? Uh, there's something that says the Montagne family. Blah, 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 blah. 70 Sauvignon, 30 Semillon. So not all Sauvignon, but let's, I thought I'd put it in with these anyway. Let's give it a whirl. Elderflower Cordial. That just smells like my mum's Elderflower Cordial. It smells like it's going to have a slight honeyed sweetness to it. What vintage are we on now? 2009. So maybe a 2010 vintage would be a bit more sappy and citrusy. But here, it feels like it's got a bit more honeyed and rich. Um, is it too late to drink it? Too late to enjoy it? Two and a half year old Sauvignon? Let's have a see. Not quite two and a half year old, but two and a quarter. It's what I call fair enough wine. Uh, yes, maybe I should have drunk it last summer, or maybe I should have opened it when the bottle arrived. Sorry, apologies to the people who sent it. Um, but um, it's got that crispness, it's got a bit of that sappiness. If I have a problem with it, the finish slightly tails off. There's not enough, uh, enough carrying it through. So it starts well, doesn't finish so well. But I quite like that elderflower honeyed character. Let's try Mr. Sabati's wines. And so the first one, it's the Sauvignon Classic. Are they, have they got the Vina locks? I don't know if you've come across these uh, rather lovely stoppers. Way to open them is just give them a gentle nudge and they ease out. Uh, so this is the Classic uh, Sauvignon Blanc 2010. Uh, and we're in the south of Austria here, what they called uh, Styria or Steiermark. So this is Sud Steiermark, just north of uh, Italy. This is very much in that Bordeaux Sauvignon mould, rather than the um, uh, maybe the slight grassiness of, New of, um, of the Loire or that more pungent character of New Zealand. Here you've got a, a bit of what I call the pithy tinned pear character. 12% um, alcohol, it feels like it's going to be quite lively, sprightly and fresh. 2010 vintage, it probably should be drinking it pretty soon, so I will. Quite a lot in common with the uh, with the Bordeaux Sauvignon, but here it's got a little bit more extra freshness. Doesn't need the Semillon to give it weight. It feels like the grapes were that bit uh, riper and fuller flavoured in the first place. And the finish I'm left with is really good. There's this bit of uh, bit of the citrus, a, a bit of that. Uh, there's a slightly tangy. Maybe there is some of the elderflower, but there's also uh, something slightly more uh, exotic. Maybe a bit of. Um, um, maybe a bit of pineapple in there as well, but uh, I like it for its freshness, I like it for its immediacy, not too complicated, just bring me a plate of trout and I'll polish more of that off than I probably should. So, going um, on up the, um, up the ladder in quality, we should, we, I think, um, this is a, a vineyard I'm presuming called Kranachberg, 2009, so a year older, and uh, a degree and a half more alcohol. So let's see whether we get extra weight, extra vineyard character coming through here. Now this is it's funny, this is a year older, so you'd think it'd be a bit more full and forward and friendly, but it really is quite backward and tight. Stick my nose in there and there's this pithy minerality that comes through. Uh, it's more, you, you get far less of the character of the grape variety and far, well, it's still in there, but it's more the character of the, a, a quite stony soil that's coming through. And there's a warmth and a rich spiciness to it. I think some of that, that warmth is to do with the alcohol. I don't know whether, whether that spice is coming through uh, from uh, a, type of, uh, a type of soil character. It reminds me there's um, uh, uh, some, so I don't know if there's some red slate or something there. Uh, I get that character in some German wild wines that are grown on red slate soil. There is this, um, yeah, this richness and this spiciness. Like an earthy clay-like spiciness. Fruit flavours are there, and the more the, the, the more the wine sort of hangs around in your mouth, the more they come through. But um, if the first one is the one that sort of jumps out and sort of goes, "Hello, here I am," this is the one that slowly and steadily impresses you, and the longer you stay with it, the more and more impressive it gets. I like that. Not just a, a year older with this one, but two years older. So we are on a 2007 a reserve. 14% alcohol. Well, will this have been in oak? I'm not sure, but let's give it a see and find out. 
and there is a smokiness here that uh, makes me think it's it's been uh, it's been in oak. Um, it's, uh, so it's four, four and a bit years old now. Uh, any characters, uh, overt characters of oak dominating the wine, it, it's like they're they're receding into the background, and you're getting this more uh, a punchy, pungent fruit coming through. Uh, it reminds me a bit of spicy grapefruit. It's got a bit of that um, earthy spice that uh, that was in the one before, but it feels like the fruit behind is a bit weightier and. Uh, yeah, I think also because because of that oak flavour, it's got what I call that uh, uh, waxy tinned pear character. I was mentioning pears, I think, on, on the first one. Uh, it's more in the uh, it maybe the Bordeaux Sauvignon mould than the, uh, as I said, the Loire or the or, or New Zealand. But it smells like it's going to be quite a rich wine and um, a wine that actually still has a maybe a bit of uh, development still to go. I'm always in two minds with oak and Sauvignon. Uh, uh, well, oak and any really aromatic grape varieties. Um, if, it, if it's well handled, uh, the oak sort of melds in. But sometimes uh, that characteristic of the, of the oak, um, it almost accentuates the, um, the tanginess and the, those, those overt aromatic characters. Here it's putting almost like too much of a, a stress on those uh, uh, on that spiciness on that uh, that pungent uh, uh, pungent lemon and uh, guava and uh, fruits like that maybe even a little bit of uh, quince in there um I, and my favorite of the three is is the uh, the, the Kranachberg. uh that one is distinctive it's certainly got a lot of to say for itself but i actually like the uh, uh, the quiet um yeah yeah more uh, simple uh, but conf the simple confidence of the of the basic one more than that. that so that will be the wine that you have a little sip of this will be the wine that you drink a little bit more of I better try it again just to make sure that's what i think yes just a bit too much of a good thing maybe final one uh gray wacky um, Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc, uh, made by Kevin Judd, who for many a moon was a uh, winemaker and general manager at Cloudy Bay. Oh, I think this is maybe fourth vintage of Grey Wacky, I don't know, but something like that. Give it a whirl. And we're back to coolness in a wine. If those previous two were a bit on the slightly rich and forward style, uh, then this is, um, is, a, is a return to a little bit of restraint. Uh, which, for Marlborough, uh, that's, that's a sign of a grown-up wine. Sometimes I find Marlborough almost shouts a little bit too loudly. But here, yes, it's got the intensity, but it's not, it's not shouting. It's just quiet, a bit, I suppose, a bit like Kevin Judd himself. He's one of those people who was who's got this inner passion and it feels like that that's coming through in the wine there is this um uh, there's the lemons the, the, there's the herbs uh there's a slight toastiness as well uh, this like slightly nutty edge and um, feels like a confident young wine and a wine that um, maybe will be better in six months time but uh, smells pretty decent now yes intense persistent but never too loud um, yeah, lemon. There's a bit of um, bit of a, some slightly more exotic things, maybe like nectarine in there. Some pear certainly. Uh, but the feeling I'm left with at the end, it's more to do with uh, there's a bit of richness. Let's see what the alcohol is in there. Thirteen and a half percent. I feel a little bit of that that warmth and body. Um, but um, also there's there's a, something of this stoniness in the soil. Grey Wacky is actually a type of soil, although if you are a Linley Dodd fan, uh, then you will know uh, Grey Wacky as a cat, uh, immortalised in uh, the book called Slinky Malinky. If you check it out if you've got kids, they're very good. But uh, so is this wine. Yeah, toss up between that and the uh, uh, the, the Cranach Berg, which is my favourite of this, this, this quintet, but... Um, Nice set of five wines, and uh, uh, this guy, Hannah Sabati, look out for his wines because um, they're good. See you soon.